Right, everybody, hello and welcome to the first Pike and Shot English Civil War battle report on the channel. I've been joined today by Miller hello. at last from Miller's Miniatures. Um, and we're finally getting to play the English Civil War. And we've been trying to organise this game for... About what, a year and a half. About a year and a half. Well, it's your, the only reason I own any of this is because of you. Um, so this, you've basically, a year, or just over a year ago, sent me the um, For King and Country box because you just wanted to have a game in a year's time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, but here we are. So we're going to have a straightforward pitch battle with a few objectives, and I'll run through those in a minute. We are using the rules from the To Kill a King supplement um, for Pike and Shot. We're not using any named commanders. We're just using a strategy rating of eight across the battlefield. So even though we will be referring to people as Hopton and Astley, um, they haven't got any rules tied to them. Who have you got? You've got Crawford I've and... Got Crawford and Cromwell. Crawford and Cromwell. Okay, I know which one I'm gunning for then. Um, and But we'll have a look at the armies. We'll have a look at the battlefield. Um, there'll be links to Miller's channel down below. Go and check it out. Plenty of ECW content over there, um, as well as a lot of other things. And um, yeah, basically, we'll just get stuck in. Okay, so for the battlefield, it's uh, fairly straightforward. We've just got a road, which will for all intents and purposes counts as a road um, cutting the battlefield in half a couple of elevated positions uh, there's a hill over there and there's one over here on my flank um, the plowed field um, counts as difficult going and obviously all these hedges count as obstacles we have one built up area which is the farm over here and you can put the basically the fences and the, the area of dirt just indicates the limits of that uh, we have a number of low walls um, which all count as obstacles to move over over. The objective for the game is very simple. We're going to be playing six turns and then rolling for a seventh and an eighth, um, basically just to see who breaks first. And we have a number of objectives. We have a central objective, which is this uh, powder keg here, which is worth five victory points at the end of the game to whoever owns that. And we have two other objectives, a small picket encampment over there, which is worth three victory points at the end of the game. And over here in the farm, there is some more powder stores which are being guarded um, by, I don't know, someone, uh, but which are also worth three victory points at the end of the game. We'll also be doing one victory point for all shaken units and two victory points for all units that are destroyed or off the table. So there'll be plenty of victory points up for grabs. To own an objective, you have to basically just have um, a controlling unit within six inches of it with no one contesting it. In the case of over here where the building is, because this area where we've said can hold two units, you just have to have more units in there than anyone else and it not be contested. So if you've got two units in there and you're holding it and there's a mass of people outside, you still control it. If there's another unit in there with yours, then you don't. So there we go. That's the, that's the layout. As you can see, we've already deployed because um, we're not using points. We've basically gone for two battalion aside and then we've basically just picked our units and what we want although now we're looking at it i think we've got something fairly similar um but it's definitely going to be very interesting of course i'm going with the uh the royalists god save the king and um you're a parliament man aren't you I so am. down with the king down with the king down with the king the problem is is how many, i know the only other royalist player i know is dom yes so uh because uh, everyone else likes parliamentarians so the thing is where i live around here well where you're from as well it's just all parliamentarian anyway yeah. um so what we'll do we'll roll through the armies um and then we'll get stuck into turn one okay so for my royalist army i'm using the late oxford army um army list from the to kill a king book and i've got uh, two commanders to begin with over here we have lord ass oh no this is hopton sorry so this is hopton and he's brought along his blue-coated regiment. So I've got one pike block and two wings of musketeers. He's supported by a medium cannon. And he's also brought along uh, one trooper, Sir Horatio Carey's um, cavalry. Over on this side, the army commander is Jacob Lord Astley. He's brought along um, Bard's regiment, um, the very, very spiky one, because those are all metal pikes on that one. <laughs> uh, he's got two wings of musketeers. He's brought along a storming party. Um, I don't know quite exactly what they're storming, but they're going to be going for us. And he also has a medium cannon, which has taken position on the hill. So just two battalion, 10 units on this side. Um, we'll go over the field now and we'll have a look at the parliamentarians. So why don't we start over on your right flank? What have you got? Okay, so I've got a Montague's Regiment of Foot being commanded by Cromwell. 
and he's also brought his iron sights. He's also got a medium cannon. We've got Lawrence Crawford in command of the whole army, and then he's got just a normal commander in charge of Crawford's regiment of foot with a light cannon, and then Colonel Oakley's dragoons uh, marauding around the table, still in command. So you've got more cavalry than me. I have. But then, like the Roy, I've got more ordnance than you. Is that it's, how it went? It's the same ordnance, but I think yeah. you've got bigger guns. I mean, at this point, I mean, at this point, it's starting to turn, isn't it? If I'm using, we're using them a later army. So yeah, I it? think I've just finished Marston Moor sort of thing with this, and it's now, you know, the royalists are. I think it's probably heading more towards after the Battle of uh, Newark. Newark. Like that. Well. Well, there we go. We'll say I'll, I'll put this on the thing somewhere near Newark. Right then. So what we're going to do? We're going to roll to see who goes first, um, or who can pick to go first or second, and we'll get started. Right. So I've got some dice for Miller to use. Uh, if you watch my Wars of the Roses battle reports, you might be familiar with these. These are the ones that he gave me with the symbol on the one. So you get to use these yep. for this game. So Miller's got the white dice. I've got the black dice. Um, let's see. Five and a four. Um, I think I'll choose to go first. Um, I'm going to try and be proactive and take the initiative. So we'll go straight into Royalist turn one. Okay, so a bit of a mixed bag on Royalist turn one, but then also slightly a mistake by me. Um, so, um, starting over here, Astley has uh, moved his entire battalion up. Storming party have moved forward and taken cover behind the trees. Um, his regiment, musketeers and pike block, have also moved up, and the cannon is repositioned slightly because he doesn't like the look of the cavalry hiding behind that wall. Things then moved on over here to uh, Ralph Hopton, who managed to order his pikemen forward to take position um, behind the hedge line. And then I tried to move the, the musketeers and they did, didn't want to go. So I've got a basically a lonely pike unit. However, they are in position and dug in behind a hedge, so they might take some, some shifting, we hope. Um, and then we realised that I didn't actually have a commander on the field. So, um, so Charles and has just turned up and joined them but we're not going to sort of throw for any re-rolls now that was my fault for not remembering to bring him on he hadn't um, had his Weetabix he, he was too busy signing um, some documents restricting the rights of the commons um, and <laughs> so here he is um, so there we go so my left flank no movement really apart from that pipe block and then over here um, Astley's taking the advantage of the uh, the early initiative so we will move over to royalist shooting okay so to kick things off in fact the only thing i think i can do is i'm going to fire with my medium artillery so um i could shoot at the cavalry unit that are hiding behind there but they don't present a clear target so i don't have to shoot at them so instead i'm going to fire at the musketeers over there and i think they're in, they're in range aren't they it's yeah, 30 they 36 um, and um, oh, I've got some other one. Do you want to measure that just so we yep. can? Yeah, well, so just, just, yep. yep, okay. Yep. So, uh, medium artillery, range of 36. There's no modifier in pike and shot for firing over half range. So, I'm basically just looking for a four or more. That's a six. That's a seven. <laughs> Okay, so uh, that's a hit off the bat. Now, artillery, we've just realised in uh, Pike and Shot, because we're so used to playing Black Powder and Hail Caesar, hits on a five. Um, that's why there's no modifier for over half range for it. So, hits on a five, and uh, on a six, it will disorder, and it's caused one casualty straight off the bat on that unit, because they only have a save of five normally, minus two for medium artillery. So, they have taken a hit. What's their stamina value? Uh, three. Three. Okay, well that's that's going to halt back. And so now I'm going to try and do exactly the same over on this side with Hopton's cannon. Um, he can just see those uh, musketeers and we've measured it and they're in range. So I've got one dice and um, I'm hitting on a five or a six. Oh well. So there we go. That is the end of Royalist Term 1. Uh... I think I've already get doing what the Royalists did. One flank is doing something, the other flank isn't doing anything. <laughs> but but at least at least I managed to do one thing. So we'll go into Parliament turn one.
Right, so do you want to uh, fill everyone in on what's just happened? Yeah, so uh, couldn't have gone any worse. I tried to remove up, uh, Montague's regiment up the hill, failed. So I tried to move the cavalry using the general, failed. Uh, I thought, obviously, these guys can't move because they're dishon uh, dishonoured. They're disordered. So Dishonour comes later. <laughs> dishon they will be dishonoured if they carry on. So I thought, I'll move the dragoons up to take the objective. Failed. Failed. So, so, so they're, they're just waiting. That's it. So I will actually point out that that is quite rare in, in these games. I know a lot of people always talk about that. There's that possibility that your whole army won't move. I've never seen it before. No. Until now. Well, I'm, I'm glad it's they're still in a line and it's not only half or half there. Yeah, you are. There, but so. you can still fire um, some cannons. Yes. So, so you've got a... Is it a light, a light cannon? You've got a light yeah. cannon there, can shoot which can shoot there. through. And then there's a... And I think this one can't because of line of sight, what with the hill. So it's actually only the light cannon. The light cannon shoot. to fire. Now, the light cannon has a range of 24 inches. So a the storming party... You can shoot at. I can so. shoot at. I think I will try to shoot at the pipe block. But okay. I think they might be out of range. Go for it. Uh, they are just out of range. Just out still. of range. Okay. I mean, you can still fire at the storming pipe. I'll fire at storming storm 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 They're not a clear target. So you're basically you're going to get one dice, and you're looking for a six to hit. Okay. <laughs> get not it in, in there. The get it in there. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, okay, I'll take that. I'll okay. take that. Right, okay. Um, and that <laughs> is the end of a very unsuccessful parliamentarian turn. So the disorder comes off that unit now. Um, and we're going to Royalist turn two. I'll keep that nearby, I know I'll need that. End of a very successful royalist command phase turn two. Um, so we'll start over here where um, basically everything kicked off. So Hopton um, tried to order his men into the field to take position um, at the road and he was unsuccessful. So Charles actually had to take command and got some blistering results on the command rolls because um, I chose not to do it as a battalion order. I just wanted to try and get them in because I didn't want to risk no one moving. He got both of them in. Charles then attempted to order the cavalry to go and seize the objective over there and failed. But I'm, I'm happy with that. The um, the unit here is is well ensconced. Um, over here, after um, Astley decided to throw caution to the wind and assault the parliamentarian position, because I never thought it'd actually happen, um, and I managed to pull off a... I think I rolled a three. So the entire regiment has progressed up the hill, right into the mouth of the parliamentarian guns. So colours have been sent to the rear. The pikes are uh, charged, charged, charged. There you go, I'm getting there. <laughs> um, and the musketeers have, uh, uh, have been pulled up. And behind them, the storming party, who I'm pretty sure should probably be leading the way, um, are, <laughs> uh, are making gains as well. So if we look at the overall position, the royalist right flank has taken advantage of the parliamentarian forces stalling. Um, and has uh, and has pushed forward completely. So Miller's going to have to um, react to that. So we'll go into shooting. I think the first thing I'm going to start with is over here. I'm going to start with this cannon, and it's going to fire at the same target it fired at last time. We know it only needs a five to hit because um, there's no modifiers for range. Cannons are just a bit more inaccurate. So I get one dice, and I'm looking for a five or six. No. I'll take it. <laughs> okay, so nobody else is in range from Hopton's um, crew over here. So we're going to go over to Astley. Um, I think the first thing we're going to do for Astley is we're going to fire the cannon. The cannon is going to fire at the Dragoons, who do not present a clear target because of the cover. Um, so it's just one dice, and they're hitting on a six. Oh, no, no cannon that time. Right, now it's time for Bard's regiment to get stuck in. Now, I think historically this regiment was a bit nasty. I think I did a whole video on it. They're not, I don't think they've got a great reputation. Um, so, Bard's regiment's going to get started. This musketeer wing is going to fire at that musketeer wing. 
Um, musketeers get the first fire rule, or the royalists do, I don't know if the parliamentarians do. Um, and um, it's going to be three dice hitting on fours. Wow. Ooh, I'll take that. That's three wow. hits and you're disordered. Uh, that's three saves. What is their morale? A morale save of five. Okay, so you need three saves of five. With these dice? Yeah. Those are ones. They're sixes. They're ones. <laughs> They're ones. That's oh no! Three casualties already on that wing. So that that wing is shaken, I believe. And then we're going to do exactly the same with this musketeer group firing at that musketeer group. Um, the cannon may be nearer, but as you don't have to, if cannons don't present the cannons, the skirmishers don't present clear targets, so you don't have to elect to fight them. So I'm going to go for the musketeers. Same again. First fire, looking for fours. So two hits and they're disordered. Two saves of five. Two yes, saves, but they're disordered again. Who is this up here? Uh, this is Lance Crawford's regiment of four. Okay, how were they in reality? <laughs> they were good, yeah, but uh, they're not doing so good. Well, today. no, history seems to be uh, be being Reversing written. Um, so we'll just check everything and take morale if we have to. Okay, so no no morale tests required. Uh, the musketeers have um, stammers of free, so that unit is shaken. Um, both of them are disordered. The thing is, you don't really need them to move. It's just whether or not your pike regiment's going to come down and engage mine. Um, that is the end of Royalist turn two. Currently, I have control of the center objective. Um, I also have control of this objective with uh, the back end of my musketeers there. The only one I don't control is the one over here in the farm. So we're going to go into Parliament turn two. Okay, so that's the end of the royal. No, that's the end of the parliamentarian uh, command <laughs> phase. So, go on, then, Miller. What? Where do you want to start? Uh, so we started over here. <clears throat> uh, moved up Montague's regiment of foot with the intention of just moving up the board, taking the objective, and taking on the enemy. That's it. So, two wings of muskets. Two wings of muskets and a pike block. I tr also tried to move up the cannon up the hill. Only managed to make uh, one advance on that. So, slowly slogging it up the hill. Next tried to move the cavalry into charge, but they failed their roll, so Cromwell couldn't do anything. Uh, and then I believe that uh, I then ordered uh, the pikes to move up. That's Probably it. wings and muskets can't move because they're disordered. So the pike have gone to engage with the, uh, yeah, with the yeah. pikes. We've got some it's push of pike, right? Exactly that. And then the dragoons have dismounted in the woods. Yeah, they're the little really ones hiding. That. There you go. You can see them just in the trees down there. So Bard's regiment's likely to take a lot of fire now. So where would you like to start? Uh, I think that I can't do anything over here. So we'll Oh, your see. musketeers here should be in range of these musketeers. Well, we'll have a go at that, 18 inch range. Yep. Um, I mean, you're going to be suffering some modifiers, but um, yeah, well, they should be in range, 18 inches. Uh, we'll we'll just take a measure and have a look. Okay, so Miller's firing with this unit against this unit. They're not a clear target, so he's minus one to hit, um, and I'm gonna get a bonus to my save because they're in cover. Um, he has two dice for shooting because this unit doesn't have first fire in the parliamentarians, but whose regiment is that? I keep forgetting. Crawford's, Crawford's does, because they're a better trained, basically. Um, so you have two dice and you're looking for fives. Damn. Nope. Um, your other wing of musketeers, I imagine, are in also we'll in have range. Look as well, right? Yeah, because as long as a unit leader yeah. can see them. Yep. Okay. So same thing again. Damn. No. Oh dear. Oh dear. Um, the cannon isn't in um, isn't in range. Um, shooting. So you can fire with your wings of musketeers. So they're going to have a shot at them. We know they're in range because they've already shot. At That's them. it. So you are shaken. You are disordered, but they not cumulative. So it's just minus one. You've got first fire. Yep. So you're getting one extra dice this turn. So you've got three dice hitting on fives. Two hit. Uh, one hit. One hit. Okay. So I have a single save of five. However, my unit is also stubborn. No, so single casualty. So these guys will then shoot at these guys. Okay, so it's exactly the same. So three dice uh, hitting on fives. That's better. You put a disorder on me. And I need a single save of five. Remember the stubborn as well. That's it. So we saved but disordered. 
Okay, and then last of all, the Dragoons will also shoot. Put your cannon. Ah, the cannon. Your light cannon. Now, what range are we at there? Uh, we are at... Uh, seven inches. Seven inches. Okay, so it's two dice, because um, it's just outside of short range for the hail shot. So it's going to be two dice hitting on fives, because it's a cannon. One. One more hit. Uh, it's... A lot, that one's a light cannon, isn't it? It is. So it's only minus one, so I get a single save of six, and I haven't used my stubborn yet because I didn't use it last on the last one. Nope, so I can use stubborn because I didn't use the reroll last time. Nope, so that's another casualty. And now you've got your now dragoons. dragoons. Now what's their shooting value? I do need to quickly check that shooting value of two. Okay, so two, you're at close range, though, so you're plus one to hit. So you are going to be hitting freeze. on freeze. Ooh. Two hits, um, there's no other modifiers. I need two saves of five. I've used my stubborn. There ah. we go. Bard's Regiment holding strong. Wow. So, there we go. That is the end of the parliamentarian shooting. It's all happening up on the hill. The guys over here are looking up here and all they can see is smoke and all sorts and flashes of guns. Right, we all, uh, we'll just have a look at close combat. Okay, so Crawford's unit have charged, so they have six melee dice. Um, as they charge, they are hitting on freeze. And because they've got the tough fighters rule, you can reroll one. So that is four hits. Four hits. So four hits for the parliamentarians. Bard's unit are, have got six dice as well. Um, they also have tough fighters, but I am hitting on fours. That's all of them. Wow. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, Miller, you need six saves of what is there? Save. Four. Six saves of four for you. Uh, three. Uh, so, three. Three. So, oh, you've yeah. taken three casualties. Four saves of four for Bard. And one oh. casualty. Right. We will go to the combat results. Okay, so the combat results are as follows. I caused three casualties on Miller's unit. I am also supported to my left flank by these musketeers. Disordered units can't support, so I have a combat result of four. Miller's caused one casualty, which is this little fella that's fallen down the hill. Um, however, both of his units that are behind him are either shaken or disordered, and they can't offer support so Miller finishes on one. So I've won the combat by three. Um, now this is this runs on the same combat as Black Powder. Miller's not shaken. He hasn't taken excess casualties, but he does still need to take a break test. So he is just rolling two d6. No modifiers. You want nice and high. Oh, I need a six out of oh. A seven. Seven or more for hand-to-hand -hand combat. If it's infantry, the unit holds its ground. Okay, so that's the end of Parliamentarian turn two. So the battle is fully engaged at the top of the hill. Miller, your disorder now comes off. And um, we're going to go into Royalist turn three, where hopefully now we're going to get some action on the left flank. Hey, hey. Okay, so the end of uh, Royalist turn three for the command. Um, not a lot of movement, and that's because I think I'm in quite a good position. The main thing is my cavalry have moved in over there to uh, try and take that objective and hold on to it. But I didn't want... it was I was umming and ahhing about trying to engage this unit here. Um, but the chances are that I'd end up blocking my cannon and my musketeers here. So I didn't want to do that. Not yet, anyway. Uh, Charles has just moved in there behind Hopton's regiment. And over here, the only movement was from the Firelocks, who have moved up to take that objective and then try and have a bit of a firefight with Dragoons. Astley's moved up to support Bard's regiment a little bit more closely. Um, so I think we're just going to get straight into shooting. My cannon that's over here on my right flank has, can't shoot at anything. Um, so we're going to go... We'll go to this cannon down here. This cannon down here is going to fire at... Um, Ooh, he's going to fire at the, this wing of musketeers here. I'm going to try and pummel these guys into submission. Um, so what range am I at? Do you mind just having a, yeah. having a look? 
It's half range, 36 inches, so am I 18? No. 20, no. Okay, so still just one dice hitting on a five. Nope. Okay, the next one, the left wing of musketeers from Hopton's regiment is also going to fire at that unit. Um, we've already said that the trees, these trees are not forming any kind of real cover. It's basically you need to have something like, you know, a dense area of terrain. Yeah. So they've got first fire. So it's 3d6 hitting on fours. Uh, they're <laughs> disordered and you need three saves of five. They're sixes. <laughs> they're sixes. That's what you can. This is, uh, so they've taken three casualties. Wow. And they're three casualties and they're shaken, aren't they? Wow. Um, there we go. Let's pop that on them there. Um, the thing is, is this unit of musketeers, because we've already measured, they're the only unit they can shoot at. So this side, they're also going to fire at them. And um, it's exactly the same. I need, uh, but you're this time you're not a clear target because of okay. this. So this time you, I need fives to hit you. Uh, so one hit, you need one save of five. Oh no, goodness. and um, they're going to be taking a break test at the end of the shooting phase. I ran out of wounds. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll we'll try and get them off the board. You can have some back. Oh. Right, we'll come up the hill now. Um, so first of all, we'll go with the disordered uh, unit of musketeers. They're going to fire at their counterparts at the top of the hill. I'm disordered. Um, I no longer have first fire, so I have two d six, and I'm hitting on fives. Two hits. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Dice are with me today. Two saves of five. They are not with me. No, that is uh, two casualties on them. Are they take He's taken one casualty already, hasn't he? Yeah. They are also now shaken. Uh, the next one, the um, wing of musketeers here, is going to fire at the one over there. Now, they're already shaken, aren't they? They are. So I just need to put one casualty on them to force them to take a break test. So I'm down to two dice. I'm not disordered. So it's two dice hitting on fours. Oh, oh two misses. That's that's a shame. That's a real shame. <laughs> um, down here, my um, fire locks are going to fire at your dragoons who are in there. Um, so clearly they're not a clear target. Um, I'm going to be at minus one to hit. They have first fire, the, um, the fire locks. So it's uh, 3d6 hitting on fives. Oh. No, all missed. Lovely. Right, so it's just break test now from the shooting phase. And the only one that needs to take a break test is this one. So your 2d6 minus one because you have one excess casualty. Hang on, there might be another minus. Yes, it's minus two because they are disordered. So it's one minus one for the excess casualty and minus one for being disordered. So 2d6 minus two. For a result of six on shooting, the unit holds its ground. <sighs> Right, so, so now the excess casualty comes off. Uh, um, I'll probably leave that in a minute. You might, yeah, you can swap it in for one of your red dots. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that is the end of the, of the Royalist shooting phase. So we'll go straight into close combat. There is only one close combat, which is this one on the hill. So I get six dice. Um, we have tough fighters, so I can re-roll one. Yes, I get plus one to my roll because I won the last round of combat. So I've got six dice hitting on freeze, re-rolling one. Five. Uh, you're looking for fours. You can reroll one. For what it's worth. So two. two. Okay. So I need two saves of four. One. So I've taken one casualty, and you need five saves of four. And you've taken three casualties. Okay, so the combat results. I caused three wounds um, on the pike block, which has put them up to six casualties, which is two in excess of their stamina, so they are shaken. Um, I'm also supported again to my left flank by that unit of musketeers. These guys can't because they're disordered. Miller caused one more casualty on me, and both those units behind him are shaken, and the cannon's too far away to support. So he finished on one. That means the combat was won by me, 4-1. Um, so Miller is taking a break test and he's minus two because of the two excess casualties. So Miller, 2d6 minus two. Eight, that's a hold your ground. So the excess casualties come off, so you're on four, um, but the unit is shaken. Um, I think that is the end of my turn. So I shall take that off. And the over here, this um, objective is contested. 
Oh no, hang on, I've, I've got I've got two You've units. Got so two I've got two units in there. That's contested. The centre objective is still under royalist control, um, and over here I have this objective. So not too sure where things are going to go at the minute. I am concerned about the iron side, so that the are there. Anyway, we shall go into the parliamentarian turn. Okay, so the end of Parliamentarian Command Phase 3. So Miller, go on, tell us where... A bit more movement this we time a, for we you. We had a fantastic uh, turn this time. So Musketeers are from uh, Montague's moved up and are standing up the other end of the Yeah, so they're not in combat, are they? They're this not, is just, they're just, just shoving their muskets in. They're mu yeah, Musketeers. These Musketeers couldn't move because they're shaken, but the Pikemen have advanced and are now in combat. With the cavalry. Now... Obviously, the cavalry, we've got cavalry here fighting pike, so I'm going to suffer quite badly when it comes to the combat results. Um, but I am defending this position, um, and I thought it was worth worth trying to keep hold of it, so I chose to not evade. Also, I wanted to leave my cannon's um, line of fire open and not have cavalry running around in the middle of it. Mm. Um, and the cannon's formed up on top of the hill. Yeah, because he can fire over the head, over the head into there, so I'm going to be definitely taking this right. And then over here... Uh, the iron sides have charged. Charge! I, yeah, they got in, didn't they? They did. They Closing did. fire costs nothing. No, probably the best thing that's happened to any of the units so far. I mean, when they finally decided to move. Exactly. Nothing else really needed to move. The cannons budged up just a little bit, so it's now within range of close of the uh, hail shot. Hail shot, and the booth. This commander's joined this unit to lose its shaken. That's it. So they can now offer support to uh, to Crawford's regiment here. So um, I'm in, in the combat over here in the pikemen. I've got the advantage because I won the last round. However, um, the iron sides I think are going to cause me a lot of problems unless Miller carries on rolling how he has, in which case I'll be fine. Let's swap dice. Let's swap dice. Well, I did, didn't I, for the closing fire? You that did. was a bit of an accident. Anyway, oh, we shall yeah. go to shooting. Where shall we start? Uh, we shall start. Uh, the cannon. The cannon's going to shoot. The cannon's going to fire point. here. Okay, so um, is it within... Because that's your medium cannon, isn't it? Is it's it within 18 inches 18, of... 18, good question. It is outside of... Okay, so it's going to be one dice. You're firing over the heads of your own men and you're firing an obscure target anyway. Six. So you need a six. I'll take it. That's it. I'll that's a six. Um, I can't... Oh, no, I'm in cover. So it's plus one save. Minus two from a cannon, so I've got a five up save. Plus one makes it four minus two, so I have a single save of six, but I'm disordered. Yeah, I'll take that. Oh, God. <laughs> have that one. Who was that one? Was that the Pikes? That was the Pikes. That was yeah. the Pikes, yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, and then the Musketeers are going to shoot into the Musketeers. Okay, there. well, you're plus one sure it's six inches, but you're minus one um, because I'm behind cover, so you're hitting 2d6 hitting on fives. Fours, even. Yep, two shots. Is that a disorder? Yeah, that's a disorder. So I need two saves of four because I'm in cover. One casualty four. and they're disordered. And then these guys are going to shoot at them as well? Okay, so you're um, shaken. So you're going to be hitting on sixes. It's 2d6 Six. hitting on sixes. Oh, he's done oh. another one. So no multiple disorders, but um, I need a single save of four. So save okay. that one. Wow. Okay. So that was pretty effective. That was good. I was happy with that. Um, and so that was going. So any so shooting over here. So we'll have these musketeers are going to shoot at them first. Okay. So you're shaken, aren't you? So you're yep. minus one. So you're going to get two dice hitting on fives. fives. Yeah. No. Nope. Nope. And now you get the cannon. Now the cannon is in range for hail shot. So it's going to be three d six. You're at close range because you're within six. So you're plus one. So you're hitting on threes. Uh, oh. that's two, I'm minus two, so I think it's gonna be two casualties, and I'm pretty sure I'm well, I'm shaken. Um, now you've got your uh, dragoons in the forest. If they can put one casualty on me, I'm gonna have to take a break test. Okay, and they are two shots. They are two shots. They're within six inches, so you're hitting on freeze. Two, two, two and I'm sword. disordered. This is going well. Two saves of five. 
That's it, that's uh, two more casualties. So I need to take some break tests. Okay, so I need to take a break test for that unit on the flank there. They've taken two casualties in excess of their stamina and they are disordered. So I am 2d6 minus three. Yeah, they're gone. <laughs> they, they, are, they are gone. They have they have broken. Um, so they flee off the table. That's the first unit to be routed. Uh, is a royalist unit who uh, went marching bravely up the hill, but will not be coming back. Is that well, first blood? Uh, it's, well, I don't know if it's first blood. It's the first <laughs> unit that's gone. First unit that's gone. I'm not bitter. Okay, so which one do you want to start with? I think we'll start with the pikes. Okay. And they've got a hand-to-hand -hand of six. Yep. So six, you need three or more to hit. My cavalry have a hand-to-hand -hand of eight. They're going to need four or more to hit. You are looking for threes. Threes. Oh, okay. Four. Four. Okay, I have eight dice. Looking for fours. Wow. Wow. That's, that's, three. There you go. That's three. Yep. Um, so only four saves or four normally. We're going to say, Ned, it's just plus one. So three or more. That's all of them. Okay. And you need three saves of whatever their cover is. Four. Whatever their morale, sorry. Not their cover. So four oh, on yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we all saved. We're all equal. So the combat result is going to be very very straightforward. Um, normally, it'd be nil-nil. So it'd be a draw. So there wouldn't be anyone. However, Miller, um, because he's pikes against cavalry, gets plus two to his combat results. And Miller wins the combat 2-0, which means I need to take a break test, just 2d6 straight. Uh, that's an eight I uh, for cavalry, and for everybody, I think that means we're gonna hold my ground. Unit retires full move away from the enemy. If unable to disengage, make another full move away from the enemy and become disordered. So I need to, uh, to disengage. So they are going to basically come out and they are they rem they do one full move away so effectively they come out back here and miller has chosen to uh, obviously have his men advance and take that position there so he's taken that objective right so that's going well on that flank for you what about over here where do you want to start uh, iron sides or I the pikes i think we'll start with the iron sides okay so the iron sides are charging so they get plus one what's their hand to hand combat is that eight they as well hand -hand of eight, yeah. okay so eight so you get eight dice hitting on freeze yep yep hitting on freeze uh, have they got tough fighters or anything like that? They have got uh, stubborn, so no. No, okay. Haven't. So how many hits have you got? I've uh, got four. Four hits. I have a hand-to-hand -hand value of two, hitting on fours. One. So Miller, you need one save of three, I believe. All right, don't, I'll get it. I got yeah, it. You got it. And how many hits did you do on me? I did four. So I need four saves of five. Come on. Oh, two. Um, do these guys have stubborn? They do. Oh. Stubborn. So these guys have stubborn. So re-rolling one. Ah, uh, so two casualties. So I am now shaken. Okay, so I've lost the combat by two. So it's me that needs to take a break test. I don't have any excess casualties and I'm not disordered. So it's just 2d6 straight up. Nice and high. Nine, they're going to hold their ground against cavalry, I believe. Hang on, I don't want to say that because I'm working on Black Powder and Hail Caesar here. Um, hand to hand, the unit holds its ground. Okay, so I don't actually know if I wanted that as a result, but yep, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so we're doing the pike combat. So Miller, your pikes have a hand to hand value of six and you're shaken. So you get six dice and you're looking for fives because of the minus one for being shaken. Oh, that's terrible. So two hits. And I have uh, six dice going back and I won the last round of combat, so I'm plus one. So I have six dice needing three or more. Oh, my God. And uh, so, no, and we're tough fighters, aren't we? Both of us are tough fighters. Yes. So I get to reroll one. So that's all of them. And you get to reroll one as well. No. No. So I've done six. So you need six saves of four. Ooh, so three. So three, and I need two saves of four. Two. Okay, so the combat result. I caused three wounds on Miller's pike block, but now I have no units supporting. Miller caused two units on my pike block, and he has a single unit supporting now because he removed the shaken status from those musketeers. So it is three, three on combat results. However, 
because Miller was shaken at the start of the combat and it was a draw, it means that he has to take a break test. He's got three casualties in excess of his stamina, so he's 2d6 minus three. Uh, that's a result of four. I'm pretty sure they are gone. <laughs> four or more. The unit breaks and is destroyed. And I now need to look at what my options are. Can I now assault that the Ironsides in the flank with all my pike? Okay, so that is the end of the parliamentarian turn. Things have changed a little bit. He's made a big play over here for the farmhouse. Center ground for the Royalists is holding, but the right flank under Astley, which made such initial good gains, is now starting to falter. Um, so all of your disorder now comes off. Um, and we are now into the Royalist turn four. Okay, so uh, mixed bag, mixed bag really. We'll start over here on the left. Uh, Horatio Carey's um, cavalry troop have charged into those musketeers, ignoring the uh, the men who are in the farmhouse, which I'm going to try and remove with this cannon. Um, Miller has chosen to turn and face because he couldn't deliver closing fire, but he wants to be able to put up a bit of a fight. Um, in here, um, these two units are disordered, so I couldn't do anything with them, which is a shame because, oh, the... The iron side's flank is looking really, really tempting there, but I couldn't do that, and I didn't feel like breaking cover with these musketeers because they're holding on to that objective, so we'll just have to see what develops. On this side, not a lot has happened. I've chosen not to have Astley join the uh, pikemen to remove the casualty because he'll only remove one, unshake them, and then next turn will probably take a load of fire from all these musket units and cannons. So I'm going to see what happens in this combat. Over here, the storming party have rushed into the woods and have engaged Miller's dragoons um, in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So that's going to be quite brutal because um, we've just discovered the parliamentarian dragoons are amazing in combat compared to the royalist dragoons. Um, my storming party are quite good, but they also have some grenades. So it's going to be a bit of a tussle over there. We'll see what happens. Um, one good thing about my musketeers getting taken out there is there's now a nice avenue of fire for my cannon, which is going to be taking some shots next, uh, well, this turn. In fact, it's the shooting phase. I think we'll start with this. So my cannon is going to fire at the already shaken unit of musketeers. Um, they, It's going to be a five or more to hit, just straight up. Come on. Oh, it yeah. bounced off the five. Um, I believe that is all the shooting from this side. So we'll go over here. Uh, we'll start with Hopton's cannon. He's going to fire with two dice into the farm at, um, is, who's that? Montague. Montague. See, I want to say, see, Montague to me is John Neville, or, or <laughs> so, who's in my Wars of the Roses game. So he's going to fire into there. You're a, you're a target in cover, so I am going to be hitting you on sixes. Let's see if I get any hits. So sixes to hit. One oh. hit, so they're disordered. Um, and you need a save of. Now, it gives you plus one for being in there because we decided it wasn't exact fortifications, just cover. So you get plus one for that, minus two. Their save is normally four. So yep. plus one two would make it a three. Minus two is five. So a single save of five. Yes. Save, but they take the disorder. Um, over here, I'm going to have this wing of musketeers. I'm going to fire at the wing that gave them some trouble last time. Now I'm minus one to hit because of a disorder. So I've got two dice hitting on fives. One oh. hit, so you need one save of five. Ooh. Nope, so another casualty. So they're now in excess. Yep, so they'll be taking a break test. So this unit of musketeers, they can't do anything apart, they fired at them last time, didn't they? And they haven't moved. Nope. They should. So I'm just gonna repeat that. So. 2d6, but I'm minus one because of the cover, so I'm hitting on fives. No hits. Um, I believe that is all the shooting. So for the end of the shooting phase, these guys now need to take um, a break test. They're not disordered, so you're one in excess, so it's 2d6 minus one. 
yeah they're fine so the excess casualty comes off um, I believe that is all the shooting. So we'll go into the hand-to-hand -hand combat and I think we'll start with the cavalry. Okay, so we're gonna work out this close combat first. Horatio Carey's unit gets eight dice. I'm hitting on freeze. Okay, hitting on freeze. Four hits. Uh, you have three dice coming back because your guys are apparently better trained than mine. Um, and you're hitting on fours. One. Single save of four. That's saved, and you need four saves or five. So None. four casualties. Wow. Uh, I think we could probably say that I did win the combat. Of course, four casualties. <laughs> I'm supported on that side. Um, they disordered, so they can't do any kind of supporting or anything. Um, so you've lost the combat, and uh, that's it. So it's just, but you're not in excess of your stamina, are you? I am in excess of oh, one. One. Okay, so. They're shaken as well, then, aren't they? Yep, so you are at 2d6 minus 1 then. Uh, so 6 minus 1 is 5. Uh, the unit retires one full move away from the enemy. If unable to disengage, make another full move away from the enemy. If still unable to, the unit breaks. So you basically go one full move backwards. So you go. But then can you yeah. follow? <laughs> yes, I can. Yes. So you go 6 inches backwards, basically towards that tree. Okay, so Miller has had to disengage and move backwards, and he's sort of sandwiched between his own unit and the cavalry. Horatio Carey has pursued them, and we fight a fresh round of combat. So I get eight dice again, um, and uh, I'm it's a charge, so I'm rolling for freeze. Oh, wasn't so good. Three hits. Uh, you are you've got three attacks coming back. You're shaking those. You're minus one, so you're hitting on fives. One. One. Okay, so I need one save of four. No, so that's a casualty, and you need three saves of five. Oh. Two. So two more casualties. Um, so you are now two in excess uh, because you removed the last one after yep. your last break test. So you're two in excess. So you are 2d6 minus two for your break test. Oh uh, four. They have, they have broken. Unfortunately, I can't continue into that other unit but the other unit may need to take a break test because they're three inches away so i'll just have a check so the other unit um does have to uh test to see if uh, if they break because they even though they don't offer a supporting bonus because they're shaken they are in the position that affect they're so close basically basically they're close so they have to test so millie you're rolling 2d6 and it's just straight up that's a seven um i believe they hold their ground Okay, so we're into the combat with the iron sides. Can the musketeers see off Cromwell's best? Um, I get three dice. Um, however, I'm shaken, so I'm minus one. So I'm hitting on fives. Come on, all three are going to come up fives. Oh, one oh. is one is so one well, one hit. Oh, uh, I have musketeers. no. The musketeers are just stuff. just a point. Um, so you're fighting back with eight, eight dice. You won the last round of combat. You're hitting on threes. Wow, Ooh, that's uh, three misses. So five. Okay, so I need five saves of five. Nice big roll. Uh, one. So I've taken four casualties. You need one save of three, is it? Yes. Sorry. Okay, one save of three. Yeah. Okay, so I've lost the comp. Well, I'm not even going to bother working this out. I've got the support of the pikemen, but that's not going to count for much. So I've lost the combat. I'm four casualties in excess of my stamina so i am 2d6 minus four. Oh, it's gonna be brutal uh eight minus four oh. is four they are destroyed they are gone however it's not off the back of your charge so you can't do a sweeping advance however my pikemen now have to test they don't have any casualties oh. in excess uh just straight up 2d6 they're oh. fine. They stay where they are. Oh. They stay where they are. So there we go. So the pikemen stay. They have broken. Um, and we'll just check the charge reaction. So Miller has chosen to fall back and regroup his cavalry at the top of the hill. Regroup! Regroup! Changing formation. And they're now facing this way, look, where I have my cavalry. <laughs> so... I have a sneaking suspicion that I'm gonna that they're gonna be meeting each other in uh, an ensuing turn. But you haven't taken any casualties yet, neither have I. So uh, could be interesting. Um, so the final combat is over here. It is your dragoons who 
just there against my storming party. My storming party have four dice. Um, you don't get any cover bonuses because um, they've got grenades. So I have four dice hitting on freeze for charging. That's uh, four hits. You have three dice hitting on fours. Oh, wow. One hit. So I need a... Oh, God. What's there? A single save of four for me. Yep, saved. And you need uh, four saves of five. Because your cover bonus doesn't come into it because of the grenades. Is it four? Four saves? Was it three saves? I think it's three saves. Oh, yeah. It was three saves. Three, sa <laughs> three saves. Sorry, yeah. Three saves of five. Two. Well done. So one down. Um, so you've lost the combat by a single one. Okay. So you are just, it's just a break test, so you've taken one casualty, so just 2d6, that's it, just 2d6. Eight, Eight, they hold their ground and that rolls on next turn, so these guys are engaged across the barricade. Um, that is the end of the Royalist turn, so all of my disorder comes off. So Hopton's regiment over here is still at full capacity. Um, I might need to bring them out if they can survive the turn, so we'll go over to the uh, Parliamentarian turn. Let's go. Okay, so that's the end of the parliamentarian command phase. So, uh, Miller, you want to chat us through what went... Well, I was about to say what went wrong. I don't mean... Wrong, no, I, think, I think I'm quite happy with what happens. Uh, Montague's regiment of foot still staying inside the town, yeah. holding the objective. The uh, the muskets fell back uh, to give fire. Uh, the cannon has pivoted to be able to give fire as well. And uh, the iron sides are coming away around to be able to give support. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about where they're going. So... Uh... That's concerning. And then uh, over here, you've just done a lot of readdressing of the line, basically. So Crawford's muskets have moved up the hill. The command has joined on with this and has removed the shaken and one of the casualties. And the cannon is still there, ready to give um, close, to, close fire to yeah. it. I should just say that we're not using uh, the broken battalion rule because we've got only got two battalion aside. So we're just straight into uh, the parliamentarian shooting. So where would you like to start? I think I will start um, from the right, firing the cannon at the cavalry. Okay, Horatio Carey. Uh, the uh, what does it come out? You cockold. So he's got written on there. <laughs> he doesn't like the Earl of Essex. Uh, um, they started out as parliamentarian, didn't they? they and did. then they uh, and then they saw the light. <laughs> and then it went back to they the other. Blind, blinded by the light. Blinded by the light. Right, okay, so you, you've got a cannon. Okay, so it's going to be two dice, and at that range, well, it's always hitting on fives. Yep. One. One. Um, it's minus two to the save. They've got a save of four, so it's a save of six. Oh, Whee! Okay. That's it, so they, they're on sales pass. Um, you've got your unit of musketeers. Um, they're shaken, so they're going to be at minus one. They get two dice, um, hitting on fives. Oh my god. No. Terrible. Oh dear. Not having that. I think there's going to be some charging going on mm. next turn. Okay. Um, Cavalry can't do anything. Over here, so shooting. So that musketeer regiment, they are no longer shaken, are they? No. Nope. And they're within six inches, because that's where you moved them to. So you're going to be hitting on threes. Two. two hits. I need two saves of four. Ooh. Oh, two casualties, so I'm going to be taking a break test, no matter what. Let's just get these casualties added on. Put the little man who's crying. Um, and then the same with that unit. They're also exactly the same. Are, are they within six? They are not. They are not. Okay, so they're hitting on fours. Oh, two. disorder and, and two saves. Both save, but a disorder. And now the cannon. And now the cannon. We know we've got hail shot, three dice hitting on threes. That's all of them. I they're saves of four, so I need saves of six. No, three more casualties. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to bother putting these casualties <laughs> on. Um, that's all the shooting, actually, isn't it? So I'm five casualties in excess, and I'm in disordered. So I'm two d six minus six. I need a double six to not run away. I think. 
Uh, nine one. minus six is three. That pike unit has broken. Okay, so the only close combat is the ongoing combat between the Dragoons and the Storming Party. I won the last round of combat, so I get plus one. You've got three dice, and you're hitting on fours. One. One. It's annoying, isn't it, those dice? Very yeah. annoying. Uh, I get four dice hitting on threes because of the grenades. That's all of them. Oh Single save of four. Nope, so one casualty for me. You need four saves of five. Five, yes. Oh, two. two. That's very close. Have you taken any casualties at all yet? I've taken one, so I'm at three, and I have a stamina rating of three, so I'm shaken. shaken. Okay. Okay, so Miller's unit is now shaken. Um, they lost the combat by two, so they're taking a break test. And um, I'm not sure if a cannon supports. Let me just check. Okay, so the cannon offers support, which gives you a combat result of one. I kill two people for a combat result of two, so you lose by one. Um, so you're just taking a break test 2d6 straight up. Uh, oh. oh no. That's six. <laughs> it's not a six. Oh, no. That is not a six. Um, they're gone. They have broken. And because I'm assaulting a position, I can now occupy said position. That's very interesting. Is that the end of the uh, turn? That is. Okay, so... Did not think it would play like that. Wow, yeah, no, I didn't think that was going to happen. <laughs> so um, I've just got to move some men over there. But that's the end of Roy... Uh, not Roy, let's keep saying Roy of... Um, Parliamentarian, turn four. Um, I've lost my regiment on the right, but everything's still going on over here, and I still have a fully formed unit in the middle. Miller's kind of repositioning all of his men. Um, let's go into the Royalist turn five. Right then, so um, I've done a couple of things. So over here on the Royalist left, the cavalry have charged the musketeers. Um, the closing fire caused one casualty and disordered me, but the charge still went home, which means that I'm just basically going to be at minus one to hit. Um, I'm leaving Hopton where he is, to be honest, because I'm holding that centre objective, and Miller's got to get me off of there. Um, but also, both of my musketeer regiments are in range of the iron sides, so I'm going to be firing at them. On this side, um, Astley has just moved to join um, the firelocks who are digging in around that objective, and I'm going to give some fire on the cannons. So, basically, it's going to be a lot of shooting and only one hand-to-hand. -hand. So, we'll start with the shooting, and we'll start over here. My cannon, again, is going to fire at your musketeers who are in the, uh, the farmhouse. Oh, that disorder's come off them now. Uh, and uh, I get two dice, and I'm hitting on fives. No, I'm not. I'm hitting on sixes. <laughs> nope. That's annoying. Now I'm going to fire with this unit of musketeers. We've already measured the range over there to the iron sides. I get two dice. Just hitting on fours. That's one hit. One save of three. Yep. It's fine. And then the same with this unit as well. Uh, two saves of three. One. Oh, finally, one casualty. What's the stamina of the Ironsides? Is it four? Ironsides, I believe, is four, yes. Okay, so they're a bit better. Um, over on this side, the uh, the cannon. Um, have those both got two both apiece? Both got two casualties, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to fire at... Well, I need to fire at whichever one is nearer, actually. Um, okay, so it's the one on the right, and uh, I get a single dice hitting on a five. Oof. Nope. Big old miss. Uh, so finally, I'm going to use my storming party, and they are going to fire at the cannon. Okay. So I'm going to be minus one because I'm firing at deployed artillery. However, I don't like that cannon. Yep. It, well, it's not a clear target, so yep. it's not cute. So basically, it's just minus one, but you'll get a bonus to your save. Wow. I'll take it. Wow. I'll take it. <laughs> Not a great round of uh, shooting from the Royalists. So we're going to close combat. Um, I get eight dice. Um, I get plus one to hit because I charge, but I'm minus one for being disordered. You're getting three dice back. I'm hitting on fours, you're hitting on fives. Four hits. One, one hit. Single save of four. 
Yep. yep. And that many saves of five. One. One. So, so three okay. casualties. Mm. Okay. So I have done three casualties on the unit, and uh, they're su but they have got support, but it's not going to be enough. They are in excess of their stamina by three, so it's going to be two d six minus three. Uh, eight. So no, they hold their ground. Um, I didn't need that. I'm probably going to take a charge from the iron side. It's going to be fighting across a barrier. Um, that's not good. Okay, that's the end of the Royalist turn. Only one more left after this. Let's go into the Parliamentarian, turn five. Then, so uh, shall we have a little run through of what's happened? Yes, okay, so uh, the Ironsides have decided to charge into the side of Horatio Carey. Um, Horatio Nelson. Um, and the cannon did think about moving, but I wanted to keep it where it is, so it's still giving support to the yep. up here. Uh, the Musketeers for Crawford have one unit has moved up to be able to give fire to Hopton's over there. The other one has moved up to also being contesting with the objective. That's the key thing here, isn't it? And still give fire to the uh, fire locks over there. Yep. And the cannon has just kind of <laughs> moved back and pivoted to be, still be able to give fire. Basically, I've got to survive a lot of withering fire this turn. So where would you like to start with the shooting? Uh, shooting, I think we will start well, isn't it? from it's the all, left to It's right, all this really. battalion, isn't it? There's no shooting from this battalion. Nothing can be shot on this one, so start from left. Okay, right, right. so which one do you want to start with? Well, Cannon's going to take a couple of shots. Uh, is he in six inches? I, think I don't he... think, think that it is. No, it's just out. Okay, so, so he is going to be using two dice, and he is going to be hitting on uh, sixes, because it's they've got the tree in the way. Oh, no, so they're disordered. I can't. What's my save? I keep forgetting my saves. So I get a single save of five, actually, because I get the cover. So it's uh, four normally. Uh, minus two is six, but I get plus one because of the cover. Yep. So five. Oh, that is a two. So note that is a, another casualty, and I am disordered. Um, ah, disordered. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so do you want to do the, uh, the musketeers, musketeers yeah, at so them? Two shots. So two shots, um, you're hitting on fives because of the hedge. Oh, what? one hit, and I need a single save of three. Yeah, yep. fine. Okay, Whew. so then these guys are going to shoot down at the Hopton's. Okay, inside. they're outside of six, um, and I'm not a clear target, so hitting on fives. Ah, no. Nothing. Right, okay, so that's the end of the shooting. Um... Oh dear, so it's the hand-to-hand -hand combat over here. So this is just going to take some working out. Okay, so let's just roll through this. My uh, unit of cavalry gets eight attacks. Um, I have to put at least four of them into the unit at my front. So I'm going to split it four and four. I'm disordered, so I'm at minus one. So I get eight attacks, needing fives to hit. Miller has two attacks, three attacks. Uh, three hand three hand, yeah. from um, the musketeers who lost the last round who are hitting on threes. However, he has eight attacks from the iron sides who get a plus one charging bonus, but that's negated by the fact they're fighting over an obstacle. So he gets uh, eight attacks hitting on fours from them. So I'll roll my attacks, then we'll roll the two separate loads of attacks um, for Miller, and then we'll see where we are. <laughs> so because I'm engaged to my flank, I also lose a dice. So um, that's the problem there. So I've got three dice going into the iron sides and four dice going into the musketeers. So my four dice into the musketeers. Actually, do you want to roll yours first, seeing as you're yeah. attacking? So, so I'm going to do the musketeers first then? Yeah, yeah, so they need fives to hit. Fives to hit. One. one. Okay, so if you remember that, so one dice on the musketeers, and then you have eight attacks from the iron sides hitting on fours. All but two. All six. two. Okay. Right, mine stuff into your musketeers, so I am hitting them on... Uh, I won the last round of combat against them, which is we plus one, we freeze, but minus one because I'm disordered, so fours. Uh, so two hits on the musketeers, and then against the, uh, uh, the uh, iron sides, I'm hitting on fives. 
two. Ooh. Okay, so Millie, you need two saves of five for the musketeers. One. So one casualty on the musketeers. Yep. And you need two saves of three on the iron sides. Yep. Both made. And I need one save of four um, for against the musketeers. Nope, so that's a casualty. And I need six saves of four against the iron <laughs> sides. Uh, is four. So I've taken five casualties altogether, which, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> so that's quite a, a quite a big hit. So I did one <laughs> casualty. Miller did five, and he has support from the cannon. So that is a result of six one. So I lose to combat. I'm three casualties in excess of my stamina, and I'm disordered. So I'm rolling two d six minus four for my break test. Yeah, they they they're long gone. They are long gone out of there. So uh, Horatio Carey uh, breaks. And it does mean that the Ironsides can occupy that position. So if you want to, they can hop over the, um, the hedge now. Okay, so Miller, instead of advancing, has chosen to take the Ironsides to fall back and reform again. Um, basically, I think he's preparing for a charge if he has to at the end sort of a, a big play. So that's the end of Miller's fifth turn. So we'll go into the last Royalist turn. Okay, so I did no moving. I just did a bit of gun swiveling. Um, I mean, I can't really take the risk of, of losing these men. I know I should like play big to like try and get people off of things, but um, I'm not going to. Oh, actually the one thing I'll do, if, as long as Miller doesn't mind, I'll try and remove that one casualty off of the storming party. Yep, go for it. So eight or less. Yep, so they've got one, they're back down to one, but that does mean that Lord Astley is in there, so if that unit breaks, he goes with them. <laughs> it's a bit different to Black Powder, where, uh, not Black Powder, um, Hail Caesar, because they take more of an active role in the actual fighting. Okay, so we're just into shooting. So we'll start with my cannon, which isn't going to fire at the pikemen who are occupying the farm. They're going to fire at the musketeers at the end there, so I don't have to fire at them because they don't present a clear target being in the farm, so I can ignore them. I'm going to go at the Musketeers. It's going to be a single dice hitting on a five. I really need this to hit. Yes, Ooh. that's a six. That's a disorder. I think it's an automatic casualty because it's a save of five, isn't it? I believe you're right. So, um, disorder I can borrow. There's a disorder. Thank you very much. So there we go. So they'll be taking a break test at the end of the phase. Come Moving on to Hop well, still Hopton's command. This unit of musketeers is going to fire at your unit of musketeers. Yep. I'm not within six inches. I'm going to get two dice and I'm going to be hitting on fours. One hit, they're disordered. So one save of five. Yep. Yeah, but a disorder on that unit. Um, this unit here is also going to fire at them exactly the same they're not within six so just hitting on fours one hit one save of five. Ooh. Ooh, one more casualty so they are now shaken my cannon is going to fire at this one here it's a single five or more oh Ooh. that's a six and um, it's a disorder um, so there's a disorder, so they're not going to be doing any moving in your turn, and again, I think it's just an automatic death, isn't it? Because it's a 5 up save, yep. minus 2, so an automatic casualty, so they're shaken as well. But um, I don't think you have to take break tests if you're hit by cannon fire at that range. No, it's only you just suffer modifiers to it. Finally, my storming party is going to fire at the nasty cannon. Let's see snake eyes again. Two dice, hitting on fives, because it's deployed artillery. One hit. What's the save on the cannon? That is a good question. Uh, cannon. They don't usually have great. I'd imagine it's a six, maybe? Uh, five plus. Five plus, a single five up. <laughs> oh, no. That is the end of the uh, the Royalist um, attack. It all comes over now. Oh, no, we have one break test to take. So you've got to do a break test over there. They're one over their stamina limit, and you're disordered. So it's 2d6 minus two. That's uh, so a six, minus two is four. 
I believe that's they're gone. gone. Um, for shooting, yep, they're gone. So that unit's out of there. That was a cannon. Just was that the? Oh no, it's those musketeers. Hop, I've got to give it to Hopton's regiment. They've done well. I mean, to be fair, they have dug in for the entire game. They've not taken anything other than a couple of disorders, have they? No, that's it. Right, that is the end of the. I even want to say the British, the Royalist uh, turn. Um, so we'll go into Parliamentarian turn six. So, what happened? Uh, unfortunately, not as much as I wanted. The cannon swivelled a little bit just to be able to shoot at Hopton. Yeah. Unfortunately, I was trying to charge the Ironsides into the pipe block to get them to form a hedgehog so they couldn't contest the objective. Yeah. But they didn't roll enough, so they've gone as far as they can and they're now a sitting duck. Uh, managed to remove a shaken. No, I didn't. I tried to remove a shaken off of uh, one of the musketeers, but I couldn't. Blundered. But the cannons rolled down the hill a little bit to be able That's to get close. So it's just gonna be another load of shooting. So where do you want to start? Uh, we'll start with the cannon over here yeah. shooting at Hopton. Okay, so you're gonna be minus one because they're not a clear target. So it is you're looking for a six. Is it two dice or one dice? Uh, are they within eighteen inches? Are they within eighteen inches? They are within eighteen inches. But it's two dice. Two dice. Ah! Oh! One! And it's an automatic. Do I'll put the disorder on there just because yep. it's cool. Um, but it's a save of five normally, so minus two uh, would be seven. However, I get plus one because I'm in cover, so a single save of six. Nope, that's a casualty. Okay. Um, right, so what's next? Musketeers shooting down the hill at top Okay, point. you're minus one because you're disordered, and you're minus one because they're not a clear target, so you're going to be hitting on sixes. One? Yeah, one, and that's another disorder. A single save of three. Yep. Okay. Uh, these are going to be again shooting down there. At okay. The uh, again, that's going to be because you're disordered and they're not a clear target. You're going to need sixes to hit. No. no. And then is it the hail shot? And then the hail shot, three shots. Three shots, uh, not a clear target, minus one, but plus one because you're within six, so fours. Fives, even, because it's a cannon. Oh, so, two. And a uh, so it's a disorder. My got whole it. line is disordered. Oh, you got one there. Fantastic. Um, so it's minus two to my save, uh, which would mean I'm saving on sixes because I got a four up save, but I'm plus one because I'm in cover. One save, one dead, fortunately. Right. That could potentially be the end of the battle. Miller, do you want to roll to see if it rolls on? So four, five, or six. It goes into another turn. That's it. That is the end of the game with disorder. One, two, three, four, five, six different disorders on there. And it's been bloody. So what we'll do, we'll total up the points and we'll come back to you. Because I don't know what we've got. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of the game. And we've totaled up the points. So we'll start with the parliamentarians who halfway through the game took the farmhouse over here, Montague's uh, regiment, which gave Miller three points. Then in the centre of the table, things have taken a bit of an interesting turn. So Miller has two units there, which even though they're shaken, they're still contesting the objective. Um, they're shaken, they're not retreating. Um, with my two units here. However, Miller's iron sides have come in and they are within the six inches to claim that objective because my unit here is too far away. So Miller takes the centre objective for five victory points. And then Miller has routed four of my units for eight points which gives him a total of 16. 16 points for the parliamentarians. Now the royalists, um, they hold the uh, picket over here. Um, Miller couldn't quite get me off of there, so I got three points for that. I have destroyed four of Miller's units for eight points, and I have shaken two of his units for another two points, which gives me the grand total of 13. So Miller wins 16-13. Well done. Good game. Well done. What do you think about it then, since we've been waiting ages to play this? It's been well worth the wait. It was a great game, two and throw. I thought when my 
pipe block had gone over here, I thought, okay, well that's it. But Musketeers have held out. I think I think the unit is the unit of the match is probably going to be the Ironsides. I was initially quite derisive about them because they wouldn't go anywhere. No. But halfway through the game, they got their act together and they They've charging over, over to here. Over They've there. been over there and then they were getting ready to restart their attack in the center. Obviously, who knows what will happen next turn, but we've already got casualties mounting here. But this is the point at which Hopton and, and Astley think it's time to withdraw. Um, so there we go. So there's the first Pike and Shot game on the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to go and check out Miller's Miniatures. And remember you can find um, links to the other games on the channel down below. Um, hopefully we'll get some more English Civil War in, in the not too distant future. Um, but it's been really nice just to get the pipe blocks out. Anyway, we hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, then give the video a like. Remember to subscribe and we will see you all again in the next one. I'll see you later. Bye for now.